I don't like Donald Trump. I used to. I found him spontaneous, real, entertaining, but now I realize he's a mean bully. I know this partly because I saw that video of Trump mocking a disabled reporter. You got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. Trump's opponents quickly made this ad based on that video. When I saw Donald Trump mock a disabled person, I was just shocked. You got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. When I saw Donald Trump mock somebody with a disability, it showed me his soul. It showed me his heart. And it, I didn't like what I saw. Me neither. How cruel Trump was. The reporter has a disease and Trump mocks him. But wait a second. Trump waves his arms around. The reporter's disability means he can't move his arms. Also, Trump did something similar when mocking a general who said something he didn't like. What do you think about ISIS? Oh, ISIS is very tough. Trump also used the same motion to mock Ted Cruz. They said, Senator Cruz, what do you think of waterboarding? Oh, I don't want to talk about it. You know, he didn't, he didn't want to talk about waterboarding. Turns out this is a Trump performance gimmick. It's not very nice, but it doesn't appear directed at a disabled person. But I didn't know this until I started researching this show. I'm a media junkie, but I never saw the other side of the story. The media really didn't cover it. Another reason I don't like Trump is that he supported the Iraq war and then lied about that. I read that in the elite media again and again. They said Trump voiced his support for the Iraq war on the Howard Stern show. But here's how Trump actually answered Stern's question. Are you for invading Iraq? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. It's hardly a pushing for war. Later, as the drum beat built for Bush to go into Iraq, Trump said this uh, to, to Neil Cavuto. Perhaps he shouldn't be doing it yet. And perhaps we should be waiting for the United Nations. I wouldn't call that gung-ho support, like so many commentators have said. Again, researching this show, I was surprised. The ruling class totally distorted that story. And by ruling class, I mean Hollywood, the political class, the media, so-called American elites. They said Trump was a big supporter of the war and that he mocked a disabled reporter. And I never heard the other side of the story. I feel pretty dumb. Makes me wonder what else I don't know. Joe Concha covers the media for the Washington, D.C. newspaper, The Hill. So what else do I know? I mean, Trump lied, I really believed, about his support for Iraq. John, I would argue that that was the first time he was ever even presented that question. Remember, he's a businessman at the time. Howard's interviews, if you listen to Stern, can go on for 90 minutes without a commercial. And he'll just bring up anything. Before the war, yeah, I guess so. You don't hear but that side of it, though. Why not? Why doesn't the media pick it up? Just because they hate Trump so much and they want to embarrass him? There is a visceral hate for Trump. The Center for Public Integrity looked at donations from 430 journalists. 96% went to Hillary. 96%? Wow, I thought it would be higher, actually, to be quite honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> and your own newspaper analyzed ABC, NBC, CBS coverage on one Thursday this month. They spent 23 minutes on the Trump sex allegations. Mm -hmm. Then there were the WikiLeaks email dump, which included derogatory comments about Catholics, Latinos, blatant examples of media collusion, got just one minute, seven seconds. So the ratio is therefore 23 to one. In the New York Times, John, the same day, there were 11 stories on Donald Trump, including one in the sports section, all deemed negative. Zero right, on Hillary Clinton. So 23 to 1, 11 to 0. I get that Trump's going to get more coverage. I get that he rates more, he gets you more clicks. Give me 2 to 1, and I won't complain about it. But 23 to 1, 11 to 0? But I'll push back. Okay. Groping, sex, mm -hmm. it's just going to bring in more eyeballs. Sizzle always beats steak, and sex always beats substance. So I get that. what the public wants to hear about. 23 to 1 hear about, though? <laughs> in other words, you do this show, right? You have six blocks, A through F. You want to give me A and B for Trump and then C and D to Hillary? Would that be so hard? No, it's all Trump. Other wiki points. There was interesting stuff that could have been covered more. Donna Brazil giving Clinton debate questions ahead of time. It was covered, but wasn't big. Brazil barely got covered relatively, in my opinion. Remember in the, in the email, John, subject header said, from time to time I get debate questions, meaning it happened more than once. The Politico reporter wrote to Podesta, because I become a hack, 
I will send you the whole section that pertains to you. Please don't share or tell anyone I did this. He's sending his story for mm -hmm. approval to Podesta? Yes. He, in other words, if I'm a reporter, John, and you, you've, you've, you've reported before, you could fact check. You could send John Podesta a question saying, I have a question about this in terms of the money you raised here. A separate question. No problem with that. It happens all the time. He sent the entire text that pertained to Podesta. The publication, Politico, never offered an apology. Because they're the ruling class. They mean well. They mean well. But it, that's why it keeps getting worse. The Clinton campaign told the New York Times which quotes they wanted printed. That is called quote approval. And in 2012, Margaret Sullivan, she's the public editor. She's basically the watchdog for the paper. She said, this practice is banned. So what happened to the reporter? Nothing. The editor didn't, there wasn't even an apology about it. And that's the thing. It's not even being acknowledged. And there is no contrition as well, which would go a long way with the reader saying, I know I did this. I shouldn't have. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. Now, I mean, they're in the tank. And, and of course, the New York Times leans left. I, I wouldn't read it, except that as a news person, I think. You I think could. it leans left? <laughs> you know the last time they, they uh, endorsed a Republican candidate? 1956. But this election, I'm amazed at how totally they are in the tank for Hillary Clinton. Every day they do several anti-Trump stories, and much less about Clinton's emails or lies or pay-to-play tricks. This week I had to laugh when I opened the paper to see this big, it's like the centerfold, a two-page spread listing all the people, places, and things Donald Trump has insulted. For example, Joe Biden is not very bright. Elizabeth Warren, sad to watch. Pocahontas, Pocahontas. Jeb Bush is weak. Had to bring in mommy to take a slap at me. Okay, I get it. Trump likes to insult people. But has the Times ever run a two-page spread on, say, Hillary's scandals and lies? They could. Just before she became first lady of Arkansas, she started trading in cattle futures. She turned 1000 bucks into 6000 overnight. After 10 months, she had 100000 But she said, I never received preferential treatment. Then came Travelgate, Whitewater, dodging sniper fire in Bosnia. The video showed there was no sniper fire. In fact, she posed for photographs. She just lied. Her lies and scandals go on and on. The Times could easily fill two pages with them, but they don't. Instead, they zero in on Trump, running stories like this one. They say during the second debate, Trump was stalking Ms. Clinton like prey. Lots of media ran stories saying Trump loomed over Clinton, trying to invade her space. So Hillary quickly went on TV to complain about that. He was really trying to dominate and then literally stalk me around the stage. And I would just feel this presence behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I thought, whoa, this is really weird. I believe that, but it's just a smear. Watch the video. Clinton walked over to Trump's side of the stage. She stands in front of Trump, and because Trump's taller, the deceitful media could portray him as looming over poor Hillary. I mean, aren't they ashamed? It's video evidence that you just laid out that can very easily be dispelled, but the headline rules the day, and no one's going to go back and watch that part of the video. The clothing. What happens if you wear white? <laughs> I love this. <laughs> so the New York Times, when <laughs> Hillary wears white, she says, it's an emblem of hope. Uh, Philadelphia Inquirer, uh, Clinton was soft and strong, a dream come true. And then Melania wears white at the Republican convention. Mm -hmm. And she says, another reminder that white is always right. A scary statement. That was written by the same writer for right. the same publication. Two words. We, we called her up. She did answer us. Okay. Given the many things Trump has said about people that didn't live in this country, that's what the dress said to me as an African American. Oh, okay. I, I was about to say that, you know, it's two words with a hyphen, self-awareness. Look at your archive. And because that was called out and that was actually covered a little bit and, and she is now a, a mockery. Many in the elite media also accused Trump of threatening Hillary when he said Clinton was anti-Second Amendment. It's not the first time that he's been accused of inciting violence. Inciting violence. Here's what Trump actually said about Hillary being anti-Second Amendment. 
She goes around with armed bodyguards like you have never seen before. I think that her bodyguards should drop all weapons. They should disarm. But take their guns away. She doesn't want guns. Take their, let's see what happens to her. Take their guns away, okay? It would be very dangerous. He was just saying she's a hypocrite for wanting others to disarm while she's surrounded by bodyguards with guns. They take his words literally and then turn it into, yes, he's calling on the assassination of his opponent and Hillary Clinton, and, and that's just reckless and irresponsible. And they're not trying to cheat. They're just so convinced themselves that Trump is evil, Hillary's good, that they see it this way. They see it as their mission to keep Donald Trump out of office because he is a danger to this country. Therefore, they're no longer journalists. They are activists. Here's something else the mainstream media has mostly ignored. James O'Keefe's undercover team's report that the DNC funded goons who tried to provoke violence at Trump rallies. Nobody's really supposed to know about me. <laughs> so the Chicago protest, when they shut all that, that was us. It was more him than me, but none of this is supposed to come back to us. We don't want it to come from the party. If you didn't watch Fox, you might not know about this. CNN did run it once, as mm -hmm. far as I know. Other networks have run it probably once. But it's not being covered because it's an inconvenient narrative. The if narrative the Trump campaign yes. did this. <laughs> Remember the apocalypse that I mentioned earlier in the segment? That's what we'd be seeing as well. The, the, the Week magazine has um, a cover story this week about what happens if Trump loses. And on the cover is about 100 white people brandishing AR-15s and pitchforks and has uh, fire torches and they're going to burn down the country if Trump loses. Remember where that narrative came from. Trump people are violent because we saw violence over the summer at these rallies, it turns out that they were incited by a Democratic campaign, but we don't hear about that. Thank you, Joe Concha.